Hi, Sarah. Well, this case was a lot for many to digest, so we built out a timeline of how it all unfolded from start to finish. According to Larissa's sister, Michelle Rodriguez, Jordan was alive July 17th. On July 31st, Larissa told family that Jordan was half dead in the closet. I feel like if I never left that home, they would at least have somebody there protecting them. After that, Larissa told her nephew that Jordan was visiting an aunt in Texas who was going to help him get better. Mid-August, Larissa's nephew asked about Jordan again and Larissa said he was still with his aunt. October 16th, Christopher Rodriguez, who's Jordan's stepfather, went to jail on child support charges. Her and her boyfriend, Christopher. Where's he at? Who? Oh, where's he at? Okay, that's who you need to be looking at. December 18th, a lot unfolded. Police received a call from Pakistan from Christopher Rodriguez's brother. Our caller is in Pakistan calling right now. He received this information third party. Says his brother and his girlfriend buried their four or five-year-old son in the backyard and found the child unresponsive this morning. Child Protective Services then removed four children from the home after finding out they were living in deplorable conditions. And Larissa was taken into custody for questioning. The next day, December 19th, human remains were found in the backyard of the home. Larissa's sisters have raised questions about whether these remains are connected to the skull found in a vacant home on Longmead Avenue. How are you, ma'am? Um, I'm calling from overseas, but I got, it's kind of a, is there, I, I guess I need to talk to like a detective or somebody, or I don't know if you can, basically it's kind of messed up the whole situation, but my brother told me something and I just can't sleep at night as far as, you know, what it pop, what, what, I don't, I don't know. I, I just kind of feel like I, I need to say something. You need to something for, uh, concerning what? your brother? Yeah, I just, what? I know, I know it sounds crazy, but. No, what, what is what he he told me Where is he? Um, he lives off of Detroit. What so is So I don't know his issue? direct address. Um, basically, um, he told me that something happened with one of the kids and, um, they didn't call the cops. And basically, he buried him and his girlfriend buried the kid in the backyard. Now, mind you, my brother is known to lie a lot, so I kind of like blew it off, and I was like, "Hey, man, I hope kid. that ain't true." It's not his kid; it's one of her kids. He, what he told me was, he came home, um, his girlfriend called him, he, he rushed home, and then like I think the little boy was like four or five. Now, mind you, I've only seen these kids like one time, so I couldn't tell you who they are, or what it is about. But he told me that um, that uh, the boy was unresponsive, and I was like, okay. Well, he's like, well, this kid had a you know a lot of problems. Like he had like one lung and one kidney, and I, I don't even know if that part is true because I don't know these kids because he's only been with this girl maybe two years, and I've been like overseas the whole time, so I, don't, I only really met her like maybe once or twice in my life. You know? What is your brother's address? I just, that's the thing. I don't know his address. Uh, I can give you his name though. It's Christopher Rodriguez. And I think is you can pull it up K that way. C. Christopher. The uh, K or C? Oh, what a C. What a C. What a C. Can Doesn't this story it? just sound crazy though? It sounds absolutely insane, right? Can you spell Rodriguez? It's a common spelling. R O D R I G U E Z. Okay. You don't. What is? Do you know his date of birth? Yeah, it's one twelve eighty. No, no, I'm sorry, it's not one twelve at all. I'm about to give you my birthday. His, it should be eight eleven eighty one, but sometimes it's eight twelve eighty one. So it's one of the two. Because basically, I know it is eight twelve, but I know his birth certificate at one point to eight eleven. So I don't know which one. Okay, do you know? Really goes off of. Do you know his girlfriend's name? Yeah, his girlfriend's name is Larissa Rodriguez. We're not married, and she just has last name as, uh, and her name is L A R. I think that, that name is L A R R I S S I S S A, or it's L A R I S S A. Now, mind you, right now he's actually locked up. I think in Medina County for child support. So he's already, he's already. Um, now, mind you, I don't even know if this is true. I really don't. I just know he told me. I couldn't sleep. And I was just like, yo, you need to so why didn't you did call the cops? Uh, he he didn't really give me an exact time frame. He just made it seem like 
it was like months ago. And that's why I was like, and that's why I was really mad because I was like, I thought he kind of told me like, you know, within a day or so. And I was like, wait, you mean this is months ago? And he was like, yeah, man. I was like, I was like, why would, what on earth would make you not call the cops or, or call what the ambulance? Tell you that? That? When was it that he told you that? When did he tell you that? Um, he told me right before he went in jail. I don't know if that was a couple was weeks that? ago or whatever it was. Whenever he got locked up, that's when he told me. But I didn't, my job, I, I didn't really believe him. I was like, there's no way this is true. And then he got locked up the next day, so I could never really confirm whether or not what he told me was either a lie or it was true. But, I don't know. Oh. I just kind of felt like he needs to be looked into because... I don't, I don't. I really don't feel he's at fault, and maybe I'm being biased because that's my brother. Because what kind of mother would bury her kid in the backyard? I don't know what kind of mother what would do that. Name? I don't want anybody to possibly turn him in. I mean, and, I don't know. things like that happened before. I really, really do appreciate your call and you standing up for what what's wrong. Oh, man, it's it's just because uh, you know, I, I, it just it's just a sad situation because. I'm, I, I know and he was crying when he told me, and that's what made me kind of believe sincerity, but I was never able to verify directly. But I know I couldn't sleep at night. And I was like, man, you know what? And then when I told this person, I was like, hey, you, what do you think? And they're like, oh, I'm going to call the cops. And I'm like, well, man, I was like, I, was, I told him, like, hey, I'm getting ready to come back maybe within day. I could literally be in Cleveland maybe on Wednesday if, if everything goes well. Okay. Right and everything. And I was going right. to do it in person, but I was like, I'm, I'm not going to have that happen and, and not come for me. And I even, I even told him, too, like, before he went to, you know, when he finally got locked up, I said, hey, man, hearing the story from you directly, he was like, I can take a lie detector test. I know I didn't hurt that kid, blah, blah, blah. He's like, I can, I can prove that. That's a fact. He said, when I came home, the kid was already dead. And I was like, are you serious right now? And then, like, the phone hung up, and then he had to go to court, and then they, they violated his probation for something. I don't know. And then he ended up going to jail for, I think, 90 days for okay, child support. We're going to have to put right now. Check it out, okay? And they okay, um, tried to get me. And he told me, all he told me was that the kid was buried in the backyard. Now, that's all I know. And she had so many backyard. kids. Yeah, right in his backyard. And that's all he told me, like, we buried him in the backyard. But the kid in question, I don't know what his name is, but I guess he has a lot of problems. So I guess the only way to really figure it out is figure out how many kids she actually has and then figure out which one's missing. Because what he did tell me that made me kind of believe the story was he said he told him and his girlfriend told um, the older kid that he was staying with his with her sister, who also has a special needs kid, and that way they don't question it. You see what I'm saying? Like this, and I was just like, it just, okay, so they I, I don't know. They think that they may think that he's with her sister. Right. Exactly. So right. the older kids might actually think, hey, this, you know, exactly. he's with like his. Okay. Okay. So they might not question things. in the driveway. It's oh. got a fence stand right there. Frank yesterday Lincoln seven four three seven. Frank yesterday Lincoln seven four three seven is on our two thousand seventeen Chevy four door. 
anyway. Listed out of Lakewood. It is showing a uh, 27 attached to it for a Tony Smith. From Larson, out of North Homestead. Okay, it's parked in this yard over there. Copy. Coming back to somebody uh, with a warrant or something. Um, I have that address. I'm start tapping on these doors over here. Doesn't nothing look disturbed over here, by the way. The address is going to be 4923 Ridge Road, 4923 Ridge Road, and the only phone number attached is going to be 216. Five five nine eight one one nine. Sylvester Sims. Yes, sir. Go. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, the address is that of the digital associate. Um, set of prime order. Yes, sir. It's in Brooklyn. Four four one four four. Hmm. Tap right here. Is it a door to the front here? somebody to do right now, so step up.
Okay. Um, you have one of uh, about a four or five year old. How old are you? Okay. He just turned Is it a boy? A girl? What? A little boy. A boy. What's the boy's name? Anthony. Okay. Um, let's see if you can get a name. Is there anything? Well, we got a call. Say, uh, want us to check on the on the uh, well being of the uh, five year old, four to five year old. How many kids are good? Okay. What can we see? Okay, I believe you. Don't mind me. But I have not taken out in my. Okay. Okay. Negative, just on the brother one. of Christopher right Rodriguez and his girlfriend, Larissa okay. Rodriguez. Let me know. Fine. All right. Hello, kids. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. All right. Apparently, Larissa has three or four children right now. What's your name, Matthew? Apparently, Larissa has nine other children and she told the other Is there, I mean... Oh, no. Hold on. You have any idea or anything? Yeah. She said she has nine. It's it's like four in that room up there. Watch the walk. How many kids do you have, man? I have nine all together, okay. but I have some that don't live with me, but these are the ones that do live with me. Okay. Where's Christopher at? He's in jail. He's been in jail. For child support. He's been in there since like October. Was he, was he here when the dog bit the lady? Yeah. That was I him, right? So. Is that him? Yeah. But he hasn't even been in there. He's been in the diner finally. Yeah, That's why I was surprised when my son came down and said, Mommy, the police are here. I said, huh? <coughs> so, Christmas has been in jail. Since October. October? Yeah. He's been in the diner county. Um, He's been there uh, October 20th. What's his last name? Huh? What's Christopher's last Rodriguez. name? Rodriguez. Rodriguez? Mm -hmm. Is that your husband? No, we're not legally, legally married. Gotcha. He's in jail in Medina? Yeah. He's in Medina County. He's been in there since October 25th. October 24th, October 25th, something like that. Do you have a child with special needs? Oh, Jordan? Yes, I do. How old is Jordan? Jordan, he is just turned five. Where's Jordan at? He's with his dad. He's visiting, going to be visiting for the holiday. He's not here with us right now, right now, for the holiday. Where's dad at? In Texas. He's not even here. Is that who you guys are pertaining to? Um, maybe possibly. What was the call mainly about? Just checking the welfare. Oh. I get, all, I get these all the time because I got ignorant ones who want to sit there for a long time. Do you time. know, um, uh, what's his dad's name, Jordan's dad? Patrick. Pat. Do you have a number to Patrick to be reached at? We need a list of all yeah, your right kids' now. names. A list? Yeah. <laughs> Can I get a pen? And paper? Sure, or you could tell me. Here, I'll write it down because First, it's a lot easier. Okay. Firstborn, all the way down the line. Okay. Supposedly, Jordan is with Dad yes, in Texas. Yes, he's with Dad. Um, we can call him. Yeah. Huh? Right well, now, I don't have the number because he was going to get a new number. Okay. But, but he's got family, so we can yes. talk to them. I mean, I don't know what this is pertaining to. 
Just, uh, just to the young, young, uh, oldest to the youngest. Okay. And if you know the date of birth, put it under there. That'll be fine. How long you been living here? This ones that they're probably talking about to is Angel Gilbert. I haven't had custody of them since years ago. Do you need that information too? Or? Well, you say you had nine. All your kids. Those, you, I'm only missing. Okay. You got nine. You, you're a little short. A couple short there. Okay. I'm going to put the ones that are I don't have right here. Not okay. Mm-hmm. And where are they at? Those, What's there? These ones are, he went to foster care, one's with the uh, grandmother, mm -hmm. then I have the other one we took, dad took custody, okay. so. How long you live here, man? I've been here two. Two years. She said her name, he said it was the boy girl. She says the girl. Oh, she. Mimi. You're, you're Mimi? No, that's Tati. Oh. <laughs> Mimi too. Do I have to pull over there? Uh, tell me something about Patrick. Do you know anything about Patrick? He stays in Texas. I mean, we were together for about two years. What's his last name? Strong. We wasn't together actually too, too long. He was mm -hmm. just like an internet thing. Do you know his, and do you know his, uh, like when he was his birthday or anything? No. That I did not. You know, we... What's Jordan's last name? Rodriguez. He took it from me. You got a phone number here, man? Um, his phone just recently just... Oh, my phone, 216-456-4301. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So who do you, how many kids, you have these children to live with you, mm -hmm. right? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six live with you. Yes. Um, do you live here by yourself or, or do yeah, you live with anyone? Yeah, technically I'm here by myself. I mean, Chris, okay. Chris comes and goes, you know, back and forth. Chris is the one that's in jail right now. Yes, he's been in jail since October 24th or October 25th. Okay. Okay. 
And that's in Medina County. Yes. What Medina was he arrested County. for? Um, he was arrested for child support. Oh, child support. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. How many kids did he have? He has one. One. And he's fifteen. Yeah. Oh, the other boy is fifteen. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um. Okay. Um. Man, I would really love to get in touch with Jordan. Okay. Okay. Is there any way I can give you when I find the number? I got two. Any of the kids disabled? Uh, he's not really disabled, but that's the one that's with his dad. No. No. Oh, what do you mean? He's just SSI. He don't. He can't talk. How old is he? He's he just turned five. Oh, okay. That's where, the where is he then? He's Texas. staying. Not. He doesn't live there, but he's just visiting for the holiday. Um. What? In Texas? Yeah. And what do you usually live here? Yeah. Okay. What, uh, what, you got a family member in Texas? I'm gonna, that's why I said, is there a number or something where I can contact you guys? How long he's been, has he been in Texas? Oh, you can get it now. It's not a big deal. We'll wait. How long has he been in Texas? He's been all, only over there for a couple of weeks. Because he goes over there to, you know, visit and stuff like that. Wait a minute. He goes where to? Uh, no. No. He goes. Yeah. Sperm, he goes. To, I want to say sperm donor. But. He goes to Texas to visit. Yeah. He's been. He goes there. He went there last year. Went there this year. Okay. Because uh, he just goes to visit family out there. But I mean, other than that, he's here. So so Jordan has he has family members in Texas. Yes. Yes. All right. Yes. Do you know any numbers? Or any, how to get in touch with anybody who actually lives in Texas? I mean, right now, his phone just got disconnected. What's his I'm waiting for him to call me. What's his address? I, I mean, don't you know just didn't send the kid to who knows who, right? I mean, no. I mean, I don't know the address personally because me and his dad don't really associate like that. But you let him go with him, right? Right. He just had his phone disconnected. He's going to be calling me with the phone number. So, and that's the only way I can contact him. So, Things have changed overnight. We did a lot more work on this. Um, we just have a few questions. At the when this all happened, did you have a cell phone back then? When this all happened, mm -hmm. yeah, I just can't remember what number I had. What kind of phone was it? I had a. It was the same one as my daughter, the Samsung Galaxy on five. What color is it? Silver and black. Okay. Did you also have like a Samsung phone with a white backing, like a brand new one? Oh, I know which phone you're talking about. That we found, my daughter had found that. It was between two phones that were in the house. There was a bigger one. Well, this was, one was found underneath your back porch. Oh, probably my kids. Probably took it and threw it back there. Which kid? Um, I don't know, probably one of my little ones. Why would they throw it Because they play with it. Oh. It don't work. You know, we found it and if we couldn't get it to break the code or whatever, my, actually Mariana found it when we was walking to the gas station. So we couldn't break the code or nothing. So we just okay. let the kids play with it. Okay. Uh, when I tell you some things have changed is we did talk with the coroner. Okay. And they finished their initial examination and there are some problems. Okay. The problems being Jordan had an old left wrist fracture. His left wrist was broken at some point and it was healed. 
it healed on its own. How? That's something you need to tell us. Jordan also has three fractured left ribs that healed on their own and a fractured right rib that healed on its own. And these are all injuries that were healing on their own without medical help, which means he was in a lot of pain for a very long time. And you're not being honest about what was happening to this kid. See, when what happened, I mean, I personally didn't, but I was scared of myself, okay? Scared of? I think talking to my sisters yesterday actually opened up my eyes a little bit and made me realize I should not be the only one taking full blame for this. I never put my hands on my kids. You can ask any of them. And a lot of people used to tell me, maybe that's why sometimes your kids don't listen. You know, sometimes I need to be more rough on them, but that's just not in me. To sit here and... I don't want to be that mother either. I, I just I, don't want to be that mother either. Right, I don't. I mean, I was like that right. when I was little. I can't be that type of mom to sit there and expect you, okay, my kid may do something wrong, but I see other discipline, you know, timeouts, you know, corner, you know, bedroom, you know, sometimes my help me grow worker even seen it herself. You know, no matter how bad my little ones connect up, I never had that in me to hit my kids. But I think I was just so scared because I used to get my ass beat by Chris just because I defended my kids. My daughter, my oldest daughter, my oldest son can tell you, my oldest son had to pull a pull knife on him because he put his hands on me the way he did. How long were you and Chris together? About two years. And he was living with you from day one? Yeah. Our, our understanding is that you were dating someone else who moved out and you met Chris online? I was with Jake. Okay. But Jake wasn't in the house for more than two weeks. Right. Since when and he I left and then Chris came in. Right. And you met him online? Yes. Right. So, if I could interject. Yeah, please. Um, so what I see happening is like, I think March of 2016, you were going through the process of trying to enroll Jordan in a class that's specific for him. And, and But is it Chris that doesn't want him to do this? Or is... Um, because what I'm reading... I, no, I did try to get him enrolled in school and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Because um, what I read was Jordan would have benefited from an environment with children like him. He's, he is autistic, most probably. Yes. yes. And what I did was, it was almost through the year. So they, when I talked to the development for the school, mm -hmm. I said, well, they either said, well, I could send him now or send him next year. Mm -hmm. I preferred that he would have started the following year, mm -hmm. so that way he's got a whole entire full year. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what my, you know, intentions was to send him to Just school. put your kid at the front of the class yes. as opposed to the yes. I did the same thing with my daughter. Yes, because I wanted my son to actually be around other kids, mm -hmm. to actually learn and to actually, sure you know. Sure you want some coffee or water? I'll take some. Coffee? Yeah. Cream and sugar? Yes, please. And I, I was doing what I can, mm -hmm. you know, and... If you notice, none of my kids or nothing ever went through this until I got with Chris. I know. That's why... Listen, Nina. I'm not trying to give you a hard time. I'm a mother and you're a mother. And my, and sister, I know you're my sisters made me realize that, you know, like... Mm -hmm. Listen, I know you... You had a horrible upbringing. A terrible... I know. So the most that we can do now is to, I, I understand where you're at, okay? But I have to, I have to press you on certain points. That's my I job. Understand. And it, it's, it's, as a human being, I know it hurts you. I can see that it hurts you. It, ever it, since day one, ever since everything happened, I just, I wanted to reach out. 
I wanted to tell somebody. I wanted to, the day it happened, the first person I wanted to talk to was my counselor. I wanted to tell her what happened just because I was just so scared. I needed somebody to confide in. Okay. And I do. I don't have that support. When you say the day that it happened, do you mean? The, the same day? exact day. That, September 21st? Yes. Okay. Well, I mean, I needed somebody to talk to. And in my heart, something told me that he did something to my son. I have to make the coffee here if you want something. Okay, thank you. In my heart, I just knew something was wrong. Mm -hmm. I just knew it. Like, you know, okay. If he can hit on me, and he can discipline my other kids, but he wouldn't discipline them like he did Jordan. Mm -hmm. How did how does he discipline Jordan? It was just different. I mean, as far as you know how you said the sock in the mouth, none of my kids got the sock in the mouth, only Jordan. And I used to sit there and tell him, don't do that. You know, I used to get yelled at. My kids all can tell you I defended all my kids. And that's where a lot of me and his arguments came in because I did defend my kids. And that's where he would put his hands on me. He even put a sock in my mouth when I tried to yell for help. I felt like I was stuck. And every time something like that would happen, he would always bring up and make me feel like guilty, like I was the one who did that to Jordan. And I didn't hurt Jordan. Well, so what, let me just say this. We've seen pictures up until Christopher Rodriguez comes in the picture. He's a healthy child. And he child. was healthy. He was healthy. However, for whatever reason, he focused on that child. I don't know what that reason was. If and was he tried to keep everybody away from me. I yes. couldn't have friends. I couldn't have family. I couldn't have nobody. I may have missed this. Did he actually physically abuse him that you've seen? A few times that I've seen, yes. Okay. And what, um, what did he do? He would smack him. He would, I mean, I didn't, me personally, didn't see him fracture anything. I didn't, you know, I didn't, wasn't around or if I went to the store or if I, you know, went out with my kids Honey, or something. You won't see a fracture. You I won't, didn't, you won't, I, unless, that's why it shocked me because. Unless it's a compound fracture. Right, because I, my son had a fracture when he jumped off the uh, bicycle. He was on the bike with my older son. So I know, you know, like, I took him to the hospital for that fracture. Like, but a rib fracture? You but not see that. But see, I wish I would, you know, it was just like Jordan trying to tell me something. When I told you that he, when he finally took his last breath, it was like he was mad. You know, like, I seen it in his face like he just wanted to tell me something. But I just didn't know what that something was. And with him being spe speechless, I mean, I couldn't understand what it was. But I could tell it was just something so mad, you know, like angry. And I thought he, you know, like he was trying to cuss me out or something, but I, I took it as he was just trying to tell me, Mom, I love you, I gotta go, you know? But in my heart, something told me that he had something to do with this. Because every time after this happened, I just hated him. I hated everything. I hated, I just couldn't stand to be around him. Did you ever ask him to leave? I did. And he told me that if I was to call the cops, that he had the gas in his name, that they would tell me that he resides there, that he can't leave. So I just felt like I was trapped. And I even told him, this is my house. You have to go. But then he always threw up. Well, if he leaves, he's calling the cops and he's blaming everything on me. Which I didn't hurt Jordan. I did. I take the fault for not taking him to the doctor. Yes, that was my fault. And my, uh, my other fault was doing... She's right. Bring was issues, was given the idea to do that, but I didn't hurt Jordan. I know it's not in my heart to hurt Jordan. I know that. Do you know Jordan looked just like you? <laughs> he looked just like you. Same face. 
There was not one day ever since that happened I'd never thought about it. Jordan didn't deserve this. Well, you want tissues? Oh, okay. He's Jordan's not um, because we have your DNA. He's not identified yet, so I'm hopeful that later today he will be positively identified. You asked me if you could see him. Um, Thank you. I. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to steal one of these because you're starting to get to me. I'm so, sorry. I'm, hey, and my sisters no made one me realize a lot. My sister, and I mean, I haven't talked to them a year. And they said, why are you taking the blame for this guy? And I admit in my past, that's part of one of my counseling. I've had bad, bad relationships and it's a pattern. Yeah, it's a pattern, and that was something me and my counselor was working on, and this just happened to be another one that just... Well, he might have been the worst one. Yeah, I think it was. You do know we're going to go talk to Chris. Have you talked to him at all during this time? No, no. You talked to him before you were put I, in jail? I talked to him, it was the same day you guys all came. I mean, not you guys, but mm -hmm. when they came to the house, and to me, it just seemed like he didn't care. What did you, you know, tell him? Like, I told him... He was I, in jail at the time. Yes, he called me about 6 o'clock that night, that evening, because that's when he got supposedly off of work, mm -hmm. from in the work or whatever he did in the kitchen. And yeah, he's like, what's going on? I guess because the detectives went to talk to him. And when they went to talk to him... I guess they were asking him questions. He didn't specifically go into the, he just wanted to know more about what happened on my side. What you said. Right. So when I sat there and I told him, and he was just like, he didn't seem like I, like I was. You know, like I was scared, I was nervous. I'm, you know, shaking and spooked and I, you know, he just seemed so calm. And you know, like, did he tell you what to say, what you should say, what you shouldn't say? No, no. That's why when you guys came and said now he changed up his story to something about December 2nd, that's because he heard me say it over the phone. He didn't know anything about what I told the police. But so when we confront him with Jordan's injuries, is he going to tell us otherwise that you're the one who did it? A woman can't do a hit that much harder. And you know what? Anybody can tell you that. And I well, say that. That's not true. I'm, I mean, he's a lot stronger I understand. than I am. And me personally, you could even ask my older son. My older son will Angel. tell you. No, Angel. Angel? My older son will be the one to, if anything, between my older son and my oldest daughter. Do you know how we would get a hold of Angel? I mean, do you know that number? I, does he live on Wade Avenue with his dad? Or do they live someplace else in the first day? His dad moved. Um, I could try to get my little sister to contact uh, Angel. Okay. Yeah. Because um, Angel right now, she they message through Facebook, through Facebook Messenger. Yeah. But I remember him leaving my, my oldest daughter a message with a phone number. The oldest daughter is Mariana? Yes. Mm -hmm. But I don't even know if the detectives got the, her phone. I mean, I tried calling. She's not answering. So I don't know if the detectives got it for, like, uh, evidence or something we, like that. Yeah, I don't have an answer. I don't think they do, but we'll find out. Okay, because I've been trying to call her just to see how she's been doing. Um, well, I think right now she's in custody with yeah. foster care. So I think right now and it's probably in her best interest that they keep the kids away from all this. Give them a break. Right. Christmas is coming up. Yeah. New Year's is coming up. Let them enjoy the holidays. They're going through enough right now. Because we're going to sit down with Mariana and have a talk with her too. But we're trying to give her some time to. And can you guys at least her. tell her so that way she doesn't feel like she's scared. She doesn't have to talk. Can you guys please tell her that you guys know that I did open up and tell them and tell yes. you guys. We will tell her that you told us Because she's. Yes. She's one, she's, she doesn't open up too much. And well, she's probably I'm, older than her years. 
Yeah. Um, she would be more comfortable talking with, with Detective yeah. Remington. Yeah. Well, then I mean, not yeah. only not only that, but at the same time, if she knows that mom opened up and mom, you know, was honest and told, mm-hmm. then she'll feel like she, it's okay for her to open up, that she doesn't have to feel scared that he's going to do something. Okay. So do you want to know about the children? About the so they took. You have four older children. They they I, split them two and two. Two and two. And the dad. One of the dads was just here yesterday. They came and saw me yesterday. Okay. But I um, kind of almost refused their visit, but I did, just because something told me it would make me feel better. So, the older children are one hour from the city of Cleveland. They, they're together, two and two, in two different Are the homes. girls with the girls and the boys with I don't the know that or... specifically. All I know is that Erica Armstrong and Bill Rozier, I think. I don't know who that is. So they're in charge of their placement. That family is keeping them away from the television. Okay. So they're not seeing what's going on. Ray and I decided that um, the state of Ohio mandates that DCFS talks with them in the first week. We decided, between the two of us, that in the first week, we don't want to talk with them. Because I don't, you wouldn't believe this based on our interview yesterday, but I spent 10 years in sex crimes and child abuse. I want to give your children a chance to decompress, to have normal holidays. Right, right. Um, and then to I get to let this, them, you know, pass over through the holidays. This is traumatic. And when they find out that Jordan is deceased, it will further be traumatic. So in their first visit, a counselor from Frontline will be with them. Okay. And they will explain to them that Jordan is deceased. And then. Ray and I would like to sit down with Mariana because she's the oldest and it's my understanding, you can correct me if my understanding is wrong, she was close with Jordan Um, and it's also my understanding that Mariana may have been touched physically by Christopher Rodriguez. No, not in my knowledge. Mariana, and I know that for a simple fact because Mariana was always with me. Okay. Mariana's a mama's girl. Okay. Which, she's she's never been alone with him. That's good. She's always, every time I go to the store, it's mom, I'm going with you. You know, so that for a fact, has I know. She, has she ever witnessed she, uh, anything between you and Chris? No. No. I mean, it's, are you talking about like sex? Me? No. Okay. No. None of my kids. Okay. None of my kids that I don't I'm not that type of mom where we sit there and make it you know, I don't think you are but but if he's a predator in other words if he's attracted to you because he's got a home with you, he's got somebody putting a roof over his head and feeding him and he's really attracted to kids, then he's playing you to get to her. And well, she may be afraid to tell you that. Okay. As a mom, will you guys look into that for me? I, I absolutely will. I mean, because I personally don't think that, but who knows, you know? And they always, and I say that because I was, mm-hmm. you know, touched when I was little, mm-hmm. when I was five years old, by my foster brother, my 18-year-old foster brother. And they always say, if, if it happened to you, it could be possible it happened to your child. And I just want to make sure that that's cleared. Well, I want to give her the floor to share that with me, if it has happened. And and she has a unique relationship with her brothers and sisters in that. And I also say that too, because her bond with Chris wasn't too, too, um, Mariana's one, she doesn't clinch on to everybody, you know, as far as males, you know, as far as, Mom, yeah, she's very close to that. She's all, uh, I've, I've, she's always been with me. Dad's never been there, you know. She's never really had a father figure to step up and be that father figure, which she thought was Chris until the
the day Chris put his hands on me, you know? And it's just like, that's why their relationship wasn't too, until kind of like towards the end-ish, you know, like recently, to where her bond is okay. You know, it's not like... How far into the relationship are you and Chris before he puts his hands on you? I would say, because it's technically not two years until this February. So it's been a year. It's about a year, right? About? No. Well, I think, I think been, he born comes on... into the picture in February of 2016. No, March. Okay. He came in March. Okay. It was 2015 16? Yeah. 16, because this is going to be 18 okay. in a minute. Yeah. Hmm. So... It would be <laughs> so it would be actually two years in March. Mm -hmm. So it's been what, about a year. So you're a year so, in when he puts his hands on you the first time? When he finally put his hands on me the first time was when his brother came into town. And I'm the type where, okay, if you make plans, make a, you know, at least make them ahead of time. You know, you know, you, you knew your brother was coming into town, and if we had plans, you're gonna stop our plans just to be with your brother. You know, and I kind of got upset because he said, "Oh, come on, let's go play some basketball." You know, it was you complain about our time. Mm -hmm. You know, now that we have our time, you know, or you know, kids are, you know, it's just family. Mm -hmm. You know, and then when we do have our time, you want to go run off with your brother. And so, I mean, I just brought, I addressed it to him. No attitude, no nothing, you know, and he just got pissed. He just got real furious. Which brother? Because his brother, Scotty, the one that's in Pakistan or wherever he is, um, he just got real pissed, started hitting me, and, you know, just literally that day he gave me a black eye. Um, Does Scotty know about this? No. I mean, every time he, every time we got into it, he would always call his brother, but always make me look like I'm the bad one. So but he, he knows, his brother but he knows his brother. Come on now. Sometimes he would get mad because his brother would defend me. So he knows, you know, like situations that we've been through. You know, some things that he's always called them every time. You know, or talk about he's gonna pack up his stuff and leave, and you know, it's just okay. Then leave. I would have been more happy, you know, but dealing, maybe all this would have been told and said a long time ago. You know, maybe that would, but with him not leaving, with him threatening me, with him putting his hands on me, my it got so bad my son grabbed a knife on him. To And I'm sorry, I know this is domestic violence towards me, but I see it as self-defense. He's got a scar on his back because I did it self-defending myself because he went and literally choked me, put me in, in the kitchen, slammed me against stuff, had a knife in my a knife in his hand. I found something, I don't know whether it was a screwdriver or something, I just grabbed something and just got you him right the police out to the house? Somebody called? No, nobody, right. nobody. Mm -hmm. And that's what gets me is that street is so highly protected by police that why didn't somebody? I mean, I even tried to jump out the window, try to get some help from somebody. I feel like I couldn't even leave my house. And then when I sat there screaming, he put a sock in my mouth, so I couldn't. And then we're sitting there screaming, you know, like I'm screaming, and he's sitting there choking me. Let me ask you this. Um, is he, what you described to me about Jordan, losing weight in his arms while developing a pot belly, that's malnutrition. See, you can, even when you talk to my daughter, that's why I thought something was wrong going on with his kidney. Okay. but Because he was losing is, the weight, he was doing, you know, but... I'm not saying you did this. My question is, is that some sort of discipline that he does to this child? No. Does he withhold mm. food from him? No. There, that's why none of us ever thought it would have been anything like that. Me, I thought it was his kidney because he, when he eat, everybody eat. All my kids eat first. 
I served all, every single last kid of mine first. And my daughter and my son, anybody can tell you. When I cook, I cook big meals. Mm -hmm. And Jordan, he was one to always eat. Mm -hmm. Always. We get pizza, he eats like five, six pieces of pizza. And you know, it surprises me because he was like, where do you put it, Jordan? You know, like, I mean, he always ate. He That's why it surprised me when he started kind of losing his appetite. And I used to have to sit with him and say, Jordan, you got to at least eat something. At least take a couple bites, well, you know, because I never begin, had that problem with him. When does he begin losing his appetite? Um, I don't know the specific date. I mean, roughly. Uh, like two months. Summertime, springtime, wintertime. I could say it was about late, I mean, maybe summer, early summer. You know, he started losing appetite. I got him to at least drink something. I don't, you know, like some behaviors were, I saw were uncalled for. Sometimes Jordan will wake up. I mean, remember how I told you, like, with his rocking? Um, That's a signature. I don't mean to... No, he's always did that ever since right. when he was That's a baby. sort of a signature of of children who have spent time in an incubator or children oh. who are autistic. They will rock and self soothe themselves. See, that's the first time I heard that. Because I even, self -soothing I even asked them. the doctor too and I was like, Why does he do that? You know, I guess self soother. Because I wasn't there to, you know, rock him and cuddle mm -hmm. him and you know, until he was four months. That's just, that was what he used mm -hmm. to do. And then used to get up in the middle of the nighttime. I used to, like, he would sleepwalk. So I would, you know, sometimes have to keep an extra eye on him mm -hmm. because I caught him one time going to the bathroom, getting toilet water and drinking toilet water. And I'm looking like, why is he, you know, like, is he even alert when he's doing this? You know, it would be like certain behavior, you know, like, and I used to have to stop him, he'd go, straight to the refrigerator. I don't even know if he's like awake when he's doing this or what, if he's sleeping or, mm -hmm. you know, it's just things I had to watch out with him. Mm -hmm. And he would just like get into anything and everything. And I noticed that when he did it, uh, even after Jordan was gone, my other son was doing it. My other little son, my four-year-old. And I'm looking like, is it because he watched Jordan do it? Or why is he doing the same thing that Jordan was doing? That's a good question. I, I mean, is it a behavioral thing? I mean, it's just something that I, okay, I recognize that Jordan used to do that. You know, like, and it was just, it, and Jordan was perfectly fine. It was just something I felt like in that house too. Like it was not really wanting us there. You know, like a sense of something. And I guess, the, I don't know if you guys heard about this, but I found out after I moved there. Because when I went to see the house, it had a caution thingy wrapped around it, kind of like on the front bush. <clears throat> and I looked like maybe it was just for a Halloween decoration or something. But the neighbors and somebody had told me that actually a father had killed his son or something happened mm -hmm. there. So it kind of like, you know, like, wait a minute, you know, this house is just like bad luck. You know, and I mean, Jordan's behaviors didn't start till we moved there in that house. I never seen Jordan behavior act any different. You know, he, his behavior just changed. You know, it's just like I had to observe him a lot more there. You know, things that he was doing, I never seen him do. Well, to be fair, by the time you moved there, he's really developing an autistic child may be a little bit delayed. Right, and he was three months delayed. He's probably even more delayed than that. Um, <clears throat> if, if we didn't get him into school. But he's developing into himself at age three. So is it a coincidence? I don't know. Is there something to do with this house? Perhaps. Um, but after Jordan, after, you know, the things happened with Jordan, my other little one, he was three, mm -hmm. when he was doing the same thing Jordan was doing. Right. Is it a coincidence? I don't know. Is there, obviously, you believe in spirits. I went through a couple things myself. 
So that's why, like, I mean, I believe in spirits too. Good and, and bad. I've actually had one what of What kind the, of spirit is Christopher Rodriguez? He's a Roman Catholic. So I'm not talking about I mean, his religious affiliation. Like what he, um, he believes in St. Michael. Is he, he, does he have a good soul with light in it? Or does he have a black soul? I say he's got a little bit of both. But when his anger comes out, it's, it's real nasty. It's, it's terrible. So he's, a, and, he's an angry black clown. Yeah, I could say he went through a lot of things too in his life. But I mean, I've never been with somebody so angry like that. I mean... Everybody sitting here in this room has been through some horrible things in their life. Right. And I mean, I even did choices. too. But I mean... But you didn't I turn them around to your kids. No, never. But never. the difference is, and this is my experience of 10 years working over there, those ain't his kids. Right. His never. mouth may say, these are my kids. Right. But his action speaks But more. at the end of the day, right. that's some other man's kid. And if he's interfering with my time, with you. Right. And then, his thing was always, oh, you know, your baby daddy's going to try to come back and this and this and that. And, oh, that's my kid. And, you know, it was just... It was always just something with him. I mean, so he's, he's jealous in addition yeah. to all that? He's a jealous guy? Very, very. And that's one reason why I don't have my Facebook. Is because I get compliments about how pretty I am and this and this and that. And I, all I said was thank you. It was a compliment. That's what you say when somebody gives you a compliment, right? Thank yeah. you. Right. There was no conversation other than thank you. And I had to hear it. There was Male one, or female. Could be. There was one time everything was perfectly fine. He was sitting up in the room. Says that the ghost spirit in the house, the female ghost spirit that we have in our house, sat there and um, told him to look at my Facebook, looking about on somebody in the past. Let's see if our nine o'clock can set up the other one. It was somebody in the past that we never, we never did anything. We were friends. Okay. Nothing, and I got a kid. Listen, I I have a really unique perspective into what your life is like. There's almost no female that I've ever met that hasn't had an unwanted sexual experience. And what those unwanted sexual experiences create are broken souls. So, um, I completely understand the position that you're in. And if you want to continue this conversation later today, I'm happy to do that. If you want me to pull you back over here, I'm yeah. happy to do that. Um, I I feel for where you're at because no woman should ever have to bury their child, and I think you did the best you could with what you had. But that guy was using you, and that's why I told my sisters too. I said if if I ever get up out of here, I'm not going back. My sister says that they would help me get back on my feet, do what I have to do, because I was always, always had my own. Always had my kids. My kids have never been a day without me. This is my first Christmas without my kids. At the end of the day, and, and, and I, I understand how you feel about if I ever get up out of here. I don't know what they're gonna charge you with. My suspicion is it's gonna be murder B. That's my and suspicion. And what gets me is he's not going to get charged for anything. Oh, now that's not going to be true. And um, it, that's not going to be true. And what is murder be? It, it's a, um, <clears throat> it's causing the death of another without a plan to actually do it. And how much time is that? What am I really looking at? Can you tell me? I can't. Or just like a kind of, like a... I would say, uh, honestly, 
I would say probably double digits. What's that? At least in the neighborhood of a double digit. Now, I don't know what happens later on down the line. And I'm not in charge of that. I can only tell you that I had one other scenario that was very similar to this. And that particular female is doing eight years. But I would su submit this to you. Were it me in your shoes, I would be thankful that my children are in homes where the adults can take care of them. This is not going to prohibit you from having conversation with your children. This is not going to prohibit you from having a place in your children's life. You will still have communication with them. And you have a unique opportunity here. It doesn't matter what you do to your children. They will always love you. The important thing here is that you tell the truth, all the truth, even the truth as they see it. You ask for forgiveness and you move forward. Christopher, and I promise you, I know you wanted to punch me in the nose yesterday, and I accept I was, that. I was being sarcastic. I'm so sorry. You weren't being sarcastic. You were angry. Just, and and it's my job. But I'm not a fighter. It's my I, job to I, make you I angry. I think I kind of got off that way because I'm so used to, like, being, like, when the guys come at me like that, it just, it just, I don't know, it's just like... Do you understand that it's your eternal need to be with a guy that is attracting guys like that? And that's what I need to change. Well, and I and this is a unique opportunity to do that. To I have heal to do for that myself. part of you. Right. So kids who are touched when they're kids wind up either hyper promiscuous or they wind up not at all promiscuous. It's up to you what you decide you were. But at the end of the day, both camps only feel good about themselves if they have a significant other. You have to heal that. You have to be comfortable with you. I don't need anyone else. I'm at peace with being alone and, and that's, only that's when I'm healthy goal. will I attract someone else who's healthy. And I can say that because I'm 50 and, and I've been you. There's a reason why I was so good at what I did across the hall. Do you understand and what I'm saying are. to you? You still are. You do a very good job. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? I've been you as a kid. As a kid, my life wasn't as, not that you can compare them. Say it wasn't so great. But, but my point is, everybody has a story, right? It wasn't so gravy. But I had a good mom. I had a really good mom. And I don't think you did. And I don't think you had a great dad either. I really didn't know my dad. He passed away when I was five. I mean, I really didn't know too much about him. I knew my mom, you know, I got to meet her because I grew up in foster care myself, but I had got to meet her when I was 14. She gave up custody of all of us. We got lucky because we had a foster home that took all three of us, right. all three sisters. Right. And I, I seen it as they mistreated us too. So I can't say all foster homes and all adopted homes are the greatest, but they kicked me out and gave me back to my mother at the age of 14, which the courts told me that they wasn't supposed to. Mm -hmm. And it was court papered. And my mom was out there, drugs, 
might as well say prostitution because she was out there. Um, and she didn't have a great life herself. Mm-hmm. And she had a horrible ending. And so I remember this is everybody your... telling me that, you know what, hopefully I don't end up like her. This is your unique opportunity to change the end of your life. Because I could have been dead. Of course you could have. I could have been dead. And, and it used to get him mad because sometimes, I, even after the situation with Jordan, it used to get me mad because he put, me, put his hands on me and choked me. And I had nods in my head and I said, I, was, I just wish I was with Jordan. And he said, what did you say? I said, I wish I was with Jordan. I wish I could take Jordan's place for him. You know, that's, and he was just like, you know, cause he didn't like the fact that I used to bring him Jordan. Oh, you know, you don't need nobody hearing, you know, what happened and this and this and that. He would get pissed off. What do you think he did to Jordan? I think that morning, technically, some, uh, I mean, something had to happen. I don't know what it could have been. Something had to happen because Jordan wouldn't just collapse like that. You know, I don't know if maybe he might have pushed him, shoved him, punched him, could have even punched him. Does he punch Who knows? him? No, I've never seen him. But I mean, if you're talking about any type of fractures, I mean, who's well, to say? There's a I big mean, difference between punching a child in the face where you're going to see the mark or punching a child. I'm going to interview the other one now. Okay. Right. Punching a child in the rib cage and no one sees that. So what I'm saying to you is this guy's a street dude. He knows how yeah, to hit. Right. He knows how to hit somebody in soft places with a hard object and not leave mm -hmm. a mark. So. What did he put a kidney shot on that boy? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Who, who's to say? What did, say? what did he was pissed off at that kid for whatever reason, puts a kidney shot on the good kidney, and it's like And it's shut down. Yeah. So now we could be very likely leaning toward a situation where Jordan was beaten to death based upon all these pre-mortem injuries that are in different right. stages of healing. And something told me, I don't know what it was, it's just a feeling that he had something to do with this. Because I not once, ever, and as you've seen for yourself, pictures and everything, I've always posted, I, my kids were always healthy, I've always, Took care of my kids. Mm -hmm. I never hit my kids. Everybody used to tell me. Something, even even the, uh, the officer at the house, he, as you can, he's like, maybe maybe you need a spanking, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's not in me to do that. You know, when I was little, I got hit with extension cords. I got hit with boards. I got hit, I had a kneel on rice on a carpet. Those are, and I told myself, those are things I never want my kids to go through. Nothing. Hey, I don't want to be that mom either. That's horrible. I, I don't mean, want to be that mom. I don't want to compel my child through fear. So, and I remember he always used to tell me, well, you need to discipline your kids and this and this and that. And it's just like, I'm doing my best to discipline my kids. What is his definition of discipline? His, I guess, is more like spanking and oh, I don't know what he considers discipline. Did you see him put the Sometimes. sock in Jordan's mouth and put him in a corner? One time I did, yes. And I didn't like it. I didn't. Did he make Jordan sit in the closet? Not that I know of. Not that I know of, but in Canada, I'll say when I step out or, you know, something like that. But as far as the closet goes... I know my kids play in the closet. That's all I know. Mm -hmm. You know, my kids love to sit there and hang on the little bar thingy. And one time I caught my little ones just sitting on the shelf up there. And I'm like, what are you guys doing? You know, typical kids. Playhouse. You know? Mm -hmm. But as far as that, I don't know. But my Jordan didn't deserve any of this. Mm -hmm. 
Well, and what I suggested to you yesterday is that the only way you heal yourself from all of this is to take responsibility for your side of the street. Meaning, if I drank, if I doped, if I didn't keep house, if I didn't put sheets on your bed, if I didn't feed you, if I was overwhelmed, if I didn't do my part to take care of you, then I own that. And no, just like I take the responsibility. I didn't take him to the doctor. That was my fault. Mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't call the ambulance when he needed it. That was my fault. Mm -hmm. I also had part in putting him there because I just had a baby. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and I'm feeling my depressed. I, I diagnosed with PTSD, mm -hmm. you know. And, and probably postpartum. And, you know, I didn't know what to do. You know, I just got scared. And I just was like, you know, and I wasn't ready to let Jordan go because I've been through so much with Jordan, you know, by myself, even before I got with Chris, I was taking him to the doctor. I was, I mean, it was a lot, but I was working on getting there because my work, I mean, my uh, social, I mean, social worker, my counselor has a preemie. So she was working with me yeah. on some things that I could do with Jordan. Well, let me ask you this. In, um, I don't know who Patrick Strong is. My understanding from you is that this was a one-time liaison with him or a couple of time liaison with him. Yeah, and then I got pregnant and here come Jordan. And I didn't want nothing to do with him. He didn't want nothing to do with me. Okay. So I told him, I set him back and I told him, you need to go to Texas, back home where, you know, where you are. So, but my question to you is, not to cut you off, and I know you need to talk about this stuff to get it out. The law says that he is, he has a right to Jordan because he's the father. What that he never comes forward or we don't find him? He's not going to come He's not. Then whom would you want to have Jordan? My Michelle? sister. My sister, and I talked to her last night. Michelle um, yeah. or Anna? Michelle. Okay. Because she's more responsible. Michelle's more responsible. She's more, she's the oldest. So in the absence of Patrick Strong, you would want her to have Jordan's remains? Yes. And to, to follow through with what she wanted to do, which was a cremation? Yes. And to divide the, the remains between his siblings? I think that would be best. I talked to her yesterday and I told her I was going to let you know that, you know, because we all agree, he's never been there. He never wanted no part of Jordan. And even on Facebook, I could even show you from old messages, you know, I sent him pictures of when he was in the NICU. Mm -hmm. I said, I told him when he was born. I didn't, I didn't have to tell him, mm -hmm. you know, those are things that even I try to connect with his sister. I didn't get nothing from Well, what if one they one. come back and they do want them? Then what? I doubt it. I mean, but if they do, then there's nothing we can do. I hope not for your sake. And, and I for don't your... mean personally. I don't think they will. I mean, they've never stepped up before. So I'm. Thinking, I we just gotta think. I'm just gonna have my sister do everything until I mean until further notice. If he if he does come through, if he doesn't, I don't know. Okay, but do you have any questions for me at this juncture? Mm, no, but would I still be able to see him? I don't know. So to at least say my last, you know, finals to him. Um, I mean, if I can't, I can't. I'll just, you know, say them in prayer or whatever to myself. But I think I just kind of need that, like, closure. I don't suspect that they're done with their examination at this point. Um, and I think that probably... They're not going to. They're probably not going to allow you that. Um, and I don't think that you want to see photos of him. You actually physically want to see your child. That's a bad joke.
Is there any other questions you have for me at this juncture? Um, so they're going to go ahead and charge me today? Yes. I'm, I'm going to charge you today at some point, and you'll probably go to court in the morning. And then in the morning, we're going to talk to the other half of the equation in Medina County. Good luck with that. Well, I don't. I really don't care if he speaks or not. And I want you to know that I helped to arrange the visit with your sisters. Thank you. That helped a lot. You can't go through this alone. And what I would say to you is I've had members of my own family do big chunks of time for some really fucked up shit. And they told me, Larissa, you've never had a record. You shouldn't even be here. Well, this is- And now I feel bad because my little sister, she's taking it hard. Well? And I know that she feels it's her fault. And it's not her fault. I assured her that uh, the other half of the equation will be held responsible for his parts in it. Because it's undeniable that when he comes into the picture that this child's life changed irrevocably. So, because um, I was in plenty of other relationships before him and nothing happened. I'll be right back. Two is a felony of the second degree 
carrying a potential penalty of two to eight years and a fine of up to $15,000 at this court's discretion. And she will be pleading guilty to count five as indicted gross abuse of the courts, a felony of the fifth degree, Your Honor, carrying a potential penalty of six months up to one year. In addition, Your Honor, the parties further agree that all counts do not merge and they are not allied offenses of similar import. And the parties further agree and recommend to this court a sentence of 20 to 25 years at the discretion of this court. In addition, the state, with regards to Larissa Rodriguez, we will defer to the state. The state, excuse me, will defer to the court as to a consecutive or concurrent sentence uh, as, to as to case number 625508. This plea agreement, Your Honor, is also a package contingent with a Christopher Rodriguez in, is the co-defendant in this case. And if in fact a plea is forthcoming, as I have outlined, Your Honor, the state is going to recite the request that you nullify count four of this indictment. There have been no promises, threats, or inducements made to this defendant to withdraw her not guilty plea and enter a plea of guilt as outlined. There is a factual basis for the same, Your Honor. Thank you. And counsel, Mr. Sharder, stand up, please. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Sharder, yes, do you understand everything we've said today? Yes, ma'am. Can you keep your voice up for me? Yes, ma'am. Have any threats or promises been made to you? No, ma'am. Are you satisfied with your attorney's representation? Yes, ma'am. Are you on parole, probation, or any community control sanction? No, ma'am. Are you a citizen? Yes. Can you tell me your full name and age? Larissa Rodriguez, 34. How far did you go in school? 11th. Can you read and write? Yes, ma'am. Are you under the influence today of drugs, alcohol, or medicine? No, ma'am. Your attorneys have explained your rights. The court needs to be satisfied to understand them. Do you understand if you enter the plea of guilty today, you're waiving your right to a jury trial? Yes, ma'am. The right to confront and examine witnesses? Yes, ma'am. The right to summon and subpoena witnesses on your behalf? Yes, ma'am. The right to have the state prove guilty on a reasonable doubt? Yes, ma'am. The right not to testify at trial and no one can use that against you? Yes, ma'am. Do you also understand the court can proceed to judgment and sentence you today? Yes, ma'am. Based upon the statement of the prosecuting attorney and yours, it's my understanding you plead guilty as follows. Count one, a felony of the first degree, punishable by three to 11 years in prison, up to a $20,000 fine, and five years of mandatory post release control. Count two, a felony of the second degree, punishable by two to eight years in prison, up to a $15,000 fine, five years of post release control, which is also mandatory. Count three, felony of the second degree, punishable by two to eight years in prison, up to a $15,000 fine, and discretionary post release control of up to three years. Count five, a felony of the fifth degree, punishable by six to 12 months in prison, up to a $2,500 fine, three years of discretionary post release control. Do you also understand if you enter the pleas of guilty that in addition to imposing a term of incarceration, the court can require you to pay the fines, cost of confinement, or supervision, and the cost of the action? Yes, ma'am. If prison terms are imposed, you'll be subject to post release control as I've just described to you. Five years mandatory on counts one and two and discretionary on counts three, four, I'm sorry, three and five. I'm sorry, I think I read count four to her, which is not a plea. I'm sorry. She's going to plead guilty to counts one, two, three, and five, correct? Correct. Okay. If you violate the conditions of post-release control, the parole board must impose an additional prison term for up to one half of any term this court imposes. Do you understand that? Yes, ma'am. Community control is the term for what was formerly known as probation. You could receive community control for up to five years, but if you violate that sentence, you could then receive a more restrictive sentence, including prison. Do you also understand that? Yes, ma'am. Also, the parties have entered into what is called a recommendation to the court. You have signed off on this, as has your counsel and the prosecutor. However, this is not a promise of a sentence, and it is not binding upon the court. The court retains full discretion to sentence you, either lower than the range or higher than the range. Do you understand that? Yes, ma'am. Have any threats or promises been made to you? No, ma'am. Do you understand there's no promise of a particular sentence? Yes, ma'am. 
Let the record reflect the court is satisfied the defendant has been informed of her constitutional rights, understands the nature of the charges against her, the effect of the plea, and the possible maximum penalties which may be imposed. Your pleas are found to be made knowingly, intelligently, and voluntarily. Your plea to count one, a felony of the first degree with the penalties as read to you. What is your plea count? Guilty. Your plea to count two, a felony of the second degree with the penalties as read to you. Your plea. Guilty. Your plea to count three, a felony of the second degree with the penalties as read to you. Your plea. Guilty. And your plea to count five, a felony of the fifth degree with the penalties read to you. Your plea. Guilty. The remaining count is dismissed at the request of the state. It's my understanding this plea is continued upon the plea of the defendant. Is that correct? That is true, Your Honor. If for some reason your co-defendant does not enter his plea, this proceeding will be vacated and we will proceed to trial. It's our understanding you will be entering the plea, but I do want to tell you that if that, if that changes, you will be notified when we proceed to trial. We're going to proceed to sentencing. Anything from the state? Yes, Your Honor. Um, here on behalf of Jordan, Your Honor, we have a photograph of Jordan Rodriguez. He was five years old at the time of his death. And his family members are here. His aunt, his uncle, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Cruz are here, as well as a family friend, Maria Cruz. They have prepared a statement. On behalf of Jordan's extended family, we want the court to know that we not only loved him, but we attempted to intervene on his behalf of all the children. Those attempts were rebuffed by both Marissa and Christopher. We specifically recall one opportunity that we had to keep Jordan overnight in our home. Jordan, although nonverbal, was able to communicate with us and shared a special family meal seated on his uncle Jose's lap. Our point in sharing this story, Judge, is to illustrate that Jordan thrived with love and affection. He was delayed in his cognitive development, but he clearly showed his love by running to his Uncle Jose when he came home from work. Jordan was a special, sweet little boy who would have developed and bloomed into a special soul. It is our deepest sadness to have this sweet boy's life extinguished and buried in an unmarked grave. As a family, we love Larissa because she too is our family. However, we can never reconcile ourselves with her deeds. We hope that you take our thoughts into consideration when you hold Jordan's parent accountable today, the Rodriguez and Cruz families. Your Honor, on behalf of the state of Ohio, Jordan Rodriguez was born on November 5th, 2000. And 12. He was born 26 weeks premature and had a whole host of medical issues. He was born with one functioning kidneys and other heart and breathing issues. He was enrolled at Cleveland Metropolitan School District where they actually tried to help with an IEP and help with his developmental delays because he was of course nonverbal. Jordan was withdrawn by his mother on September 13, 2016, and told officials at the school that he was moving out of state. Jordan's last medical care ceased on or about November of 2015. Her Larissa, when she was questioned about her child, she said he was out of town, and she repeatedly said that. Then finally, when she was confronted with the fact that that child may have been buried in her backyard, she told Detective Remington, this is what happened on September 21st. While getting the kids ready for school, Christopher brought Jordan in to the bathroom where he was in a semi-conscious state. She tried to revive him with a cold shower and then she laid him in bed for 24 hours. And she makes it a point to tell Detective Remington that she laid him in bed, in her bed, because she wanted to be close to him. She woke up the next morning of September 22nd and he was dead. 
Larissa and the co-defendant Christopher decide to dig a hole which is four foot by four foot. They wrap him in numerous blankets, garbage bags, duffel bag, and bury him in the backyard. And you will find, Judge, I have provided to this court um, under seal, State's Exhibit A1, A, 1A to 1H, which are several photographs of the time and energy that it took to bury this child. And the very last photograph is a picture of Jordan. When he came out of the bag, he had a diaper on him, he had a pajama top, and some shorts. And the reason for showing you these photographs, Judge, is to show you the time and the energy that it took to bury this child versus dialing 911 for help. And the state is also going to give you state's exhibit number two, which is an autopsy. So as she continues to talk to, Dr. to Detective Remington, she claims that this little, that she herself has suffered abuse at the hands of Christopher Rodriguez and that that abuse transferred to her kids. But she would never go any further than that to articulate anything else. So if it, if it wasn't for Scott Rodriguez calling the police on December 19, 2017 from Pakistan and telling Cleveland Police Department that a child was buried in the backyard of her home, this child may still have been there, Your Honor. So I'm going to hand you the State's Exhibit 1, A through H, and 2, and I'm also going to make note of the fact that you will find in the autopsy that there were healing fractures and acute fractures. The healing fractures, Your Honor, were of the ribs. And specifically, they were, there was a wrist fracture and then there were healing ribs, six, eight, 10 on the right side and eight on the left side. Those are most consistent with child abuse according to our medical examiner. And the recent fracture, the right six, nine, and 10, they're indicative of child abuse, but they're not definitive. Your Honor, this is a very tragic case, as all cases are when it involves children. But the definition of a mother is the meaning the meaning of being a mother is virtually endless. A mother is a protector, a disciplinarian, and a friend. A mother is selfless and loving human who must sacrifice many of her wants and needs for the wants and needs of their children. From the day Jordan was born, I'm sure that child may have tested her patience. No matter what a child does or says, being a mother means that you love your child unconditionally. When a woman becomes pregnant, her responsibility is to provide a safe and secure environment while her baby grows. The responsibility continues when she becomes a mother. Whether it's ensuring her child has a roof over its head, to keeping monsters away at night, and everything in between. Larissa Rodriguez failed miserably, Your Honor, as Jordan's mother, as his caretaker, as his protector, and even in death, by not ascending for help, not asking for help, not providing help. But she obviously took the time to have him wrapped over and over again. And you will see in one of those photographs, there are mothballs in that bag. And those mothballs, Your Honor, are to keep away rodents and animals. There's a sad commentary of this child's end. Though his beginning was hard, his end didn't have to be so hard. 
So we ask that you impose what this court deems appropriate in the recommendation of the Thank you. I have a question about the autopsy. It says that the child was five years old and he was 15 pounds at the time of the autopsy. Yes, yeah, Your Honor. We cannot speak to the issue of malnutrition because of the decomposition was so grave. And speaking with Dr. Gilson said that they actually had taken some of the bones to have them further analyzed at the hospital, but they were not able to say anything determinative because malnutrition, depending on kids, it can go up and go down depending depending on feeding patterns. So we cannot- What about the lack of subcutaneous fat? I'm sorry? The lack of subcutaneous fat. He said the same thing. I mean, we can hypothecate something, but we cannot be definitive within a reasonable degree of medical certainty. Okay, that's fair. Thank you. Anything else from the state? No, Your Honor, thank you. Okay, who will be speaking for the defense? I will, Your Honor. Your Honor, may it please the court. Obviously, Ms. Rodriguez has accepted responsibility, not only for this, but the matter for which she is presently under sentence. We cannot undo the tragedy, in fact, the horror that this case represents and what she's done. I only suggest to the court, in deference to my opponents, that you effectuate the recommended agreed sentence that we provided to the court. And quite frankly, I would say that a 20-year term of prison, it doesn't demean anything. It's 20 years in prison, Judge. The defendant presents with no prior criminal history of any sort, and I'd ask you to take that into account. Thank you. Would you like to speak? You don't have to if you don't wish. Thank you. I'm not quite sure I understand why you think a lack of criminal history is even relevant here. I only ask the court to consider. Have you seen the pictures I just saw? I've seen all the pictures and more, Your Honor. This is a very well thought out burial. Your Honor, again, we, any time a negotiated settlement is reached, it's our acknowledgement that facts sufficient to establish proof beyond a reasonable doubt of the elements of the crime to which we enter pleas exist. We do not adopt one version or another of what exactly the choreography of any person's role. I would suggest to you, Your Honor. What does that mean, you don't adopt the theory? Well, because I will say that I believe that the other defendant is largely responsible for everything that happened after that child expired. That's all, Judge. But you can't deny that your client had knowledge. We can't deny her complicity. And you can't deny that your client didn't call, first of all, the doctor when he was sick and the police later when her husband buried him. Yes, Your Honor. Those are the factual bases of her pleas. Thank you. Well, I don't think it's relevant that she has no prior criminal record given these offenses. These offenses are horrible offenses. Agreed. And yes, a prior criminal record might warrant an even longer sentence. But a 20-year sentence, to me, is not appropriate. I understand, Your Honor. The court imposes a sentence as follows. Count 1, involuntary manslaughter, felony of the first degree, 11 years in prison. Count 2, felony of the second degree, felony of assault, 8 years in prison. Count 3, felony of the third degree, I'm sorry, felony of the second degree, 6 years in prison. Count 5, abuse of the corpse, felony of the fifth degree, 9 months in prison. Counts 1, 2, and 3 to be served consecutive to each other and concurrent to the sentence imposed in Count 5 for a total sentence of 25 years. The sentence is to be served concurrent to the sentence previously imposed in 625-508 for a total sentence of 25 years. She's subject to mandatory post-release control on Count 1 for 5 years, mandatory 5 years on Count 2, discretionary count 3 and 5 for up to 3 years. If she violates the conditions of post-release control, the parole board must impose an additional prison term for up to one half of any prison term this court has imposed. Fines, fees, and costs are waived as she's in need of remand. 
And the court finds that consecutive sentences are necessary to protect the public from future crime and to punish the offender. They are not disproportionate to the seriousness of the offender's conduct and to the danger she poses to the public. The court also finds that at least two of the multiple offenses were committed as part of one or more courses of conduct, and the harm caused by two or more of the multiple offenses so committed was so great or unusual that no single prison term would adequately reflect the seriousness of her conduct. Any questions from the state? None, Your Honor. Thank you. Any questions from the defense? No, Your Honor. Thank you. Remand for testimony. to withdraw his not guilty plea and enter a plea of guilt as outlined, Your Honor. The state is going to respectfully request that this court amend count one to reflect involuntary manslaughter in violation of Ohio Revised Code 2903.04a. It is a felony of the first degree, Your Honor. It carries with a potential penalty of three to 11 years of one year increments of fine of up to $20,000 at this court's discretion. Is my further understanding this defendant will be pleading guilty to count two as a felonious assault in violation of Ohio Revised Code 2903.11a1. It is a felony of the second degree, carrying with a potential penalty of two to eight years to be served in one year increments and a fine of up to $15,000 at this court's discretion. In addition, he will be pleading guilty to an amended count three to reflect a date change from January 1st, 2017 to September 21st, 2017 to September 22nd, 2017. That is endangering children in violation of Ohio Revised Code 2919.22b1. It too is a felony of the second degree, carrying a potential penalty of two to eight years and a fine of up to $15,000 at this court's discretion. In addition, he'll be pleading guilty to count five gross abuse of courts, a felony of the fifth degree, carrying with a potential penalty of six to 12 months and a fine of up to $2,500 at this court's discretion. In addition, Your Honor, the parties further agree that all counts do not merge and are not allied offenses of similar import. The parties further agree to an agreed recommended sentence of 20 to 25 years at the discretion of this court. And this too, Your Honor, was a package deal with regards to his co-defendant, Larissa Rodriguez. Other than what has been spread on the record, there have been no promises, no threats, and no inducements made to this defendant to withdraw his not guilty plea and enter a plea of guilt as outlined. There is a factual basis for the same, Your Honor. And if in fact a plea is forthcoming, we're going to respectfully request that you not only count for on this indictment. Thank you. I'm sorry. Counsel, is this your understanding of the pleas? It is, Your Honor. Mr. Rodriguez, do you understand everything you've said today? Yes, ma'am. Can you keep your voice up for me? <clears throat> yes, Your Honor. Have any threats or promises been made to you? No, Your Honor. Are you satisfied with your attorney's representation? Yes, Your Honor. Are you on parole, probation, or any community control sanction? No, Your Honor. Are you a citizen? Yes, Your Honor. Can you tell me your full name and age? Christopher Michael Rodriguez, 36 years old. How far did you go to school? 
Can you read and write? Yes, ma'am. Are you under the influence today of drugs, alcohol, or medicine? Yes, but not to impair my uh, judgment. What medicines? Uh, Zoloft and Blue Spark. Okay, and do you understand the proceedings today? Yes, ma'am. All right, any others? No, Your Honor. Your attorneys have advised you the court needs to be satisfied that you understand your rights. Do you understand if you enter the pleas of guilty, you're waiving your right to a jury trial? Yes, Your Honor. The right to confront and examine witnesses? Yes, Your Honor. The right to summon and subpoena witnesses on your behalf? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Point seven. Yes, Your Honor. The right to have the state prove guilt beyond a reasonable doubt? Yes, Your Honor. The right not to testify at trial and no one can use that against you? Yes, Your Honor. Do you also understand the court could proceed to judgment and sentence you immediately? Yes, Your Honor. Based upon the statement of the prosecuting attorney and yours, it's my understanding you'll plead guilty to count one, a felony of the first degree. Punishable by three to 11 years in prison, up to a $20,000 fine, five years of mandatory post release control. Count two, a felony in the second degree. Punishable by two to eight years in prison, up to a $15,000 fine, five years of mandatory post release control. Count three, a felony of the second degree. Punishable by two to eight years in prison, up to a $15,000 fine, three years of discretionary post release control. Count five, a felony of the fifth degree, punishable by six to 12 months in prison and up to a $2,500 fine and three years of discretionary post release control. Do you also understand if you enter the pleas of guilty that in addition to imposing a term of incarceration, the court can require you to pay the fines, costs of confinement or supervision and the cost of the action? Yes, Your Honor. And if you're sentenced consecutively, you face 28 years in prison and $66,000 in fines. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. If you're sent to prison, you will be subject to post-release control, as I have just explained to you. And if you violate the conditions of post-release control, the parole board must impose an additional prison term for up to one half of any term I might impose. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. Community control is a term for what was formerly known as probation, and you could receive community control for up to five years. If you violate that sentence, you could then receive a more restrictive sentence, including prison. Do you also understand that? Yes, Your Honor. There has been a recommendation made to the court. I want to be clear that you understand it is not a promise of sentence and the court is not bound by the recommendation. It is a suggestion to the court, but it is not binding and it is not a promise of sentence. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. Have any threats or promises been made to you? No. Do you understand there's no promise of a particular sentence? Yes, Your Honor. Let the record reflect the court is satisfied the defendant has been informed of his constitutional rights, understands the nature of the charges against him, the effect of a plea and the possible maximum penalties which may be imposed. Your pleas are found to be made knowingly, intelligently, and voluntarily. Your plea to count one, a felony of the first degree with the penalties as read to you. What is your plea, sir? Guilty. Your plea to count two, a felony of the second degree with the penalties as read to you. Your plea. Guilty. Your plea to count three, a felony of the second degree with the penalties as read to you. Your plea. Guilty. Count five, a felony of the fifth degree with the penalties as read to you. Your plea. Guilty. The remaining count is dismissed at the request of the state. We are proceeding to sentencing. Ms. Farad. Thank you, Your Honor. On behalf of Jordan, his extended family is here, and they have made a statement. On behalf of Jordan's extended family, we want this court to know that we not only loved him, but we attempted to intervene on his behalf and of all the children. Those attempts were rebuffed, rebuffed by both Marissa and Christopher. We specifically recall one opportunity that we had to keep Jordan overnight in our home. Jordan, although nonverbal, was able to communicate with us and share a special family meal seated in his uncle Jose's lap. Our point in sharing this story is to illustrate that Jordan thrived with love and affection. He was delayed in his cognitive development, but he clearly showed his love by running to his uncle Jose when he came home from work. Jordan was a special, sweet little boy who would have developed and bloomed into a special soul. It is our deepest sadness to have the sweet boy's life extinguished and buried in an unmarked grave. However, we can never reconcile what Mr. Rodriguez has done in this case. We hope that you will take our thoughts and considerations when you hold Jordan's parents accountable today. The Rodriguez and Cruz. Anything else? Judge, the purposes and principles of sentencing are to punish the offender and protect the public. The state of Ohio has already handed you state's exhibit under seal A1 through H, which are photographs 
of this child's burial and um, states exhibit number two, which is the autopsy. And again, there are healing fractures and recent fractures on this little boy, a wrist fracture, and the healing fractures of the right side, six, eight, and 10 of the ribs and left eighth rib, which are most consistent with child abuse. And then the recent fractures of the right six, nine, and 10 ribs, which are indicative or which are indicative of child abuse, but not definitive. Your Honor, the time that Mr. Rodriguez and Miss Rodriguez took the time to bury this child instead of dialing 911 is abhorrent to me. This child needed aid and assistance and they both failed miserably. But what they didn't fail at is trying to bury and hide this little boy. Instead of rendering aid, they buried him. And that was to hide what had happened to him. Um, not only did they put a pull up over his head, they also put mothballs. That takes a lot of time, energy, and effort to think of those things where they could have dialed 911. So I think their actions speak louder than words. And I think Mr. Rodriguez also needs to be punished. And um, we also ask that you consider the agreed, recommended sentence of 20 to 25 years against Mr. Rodriguez. Thank you. The initial information put in police came from uh, Mr. Rodriguez, what is the relationship to this gentleman? Uh, it was his brother, Your Honor, who was serving in our military in Pakistan. Apparently, Mr. Rodriguez, prior to going to the Dinah Court to serve his sentence, called his brother up and told him that this baby died, didn't give any explanation, just said the baby had died, and that they had decided to bury this child in the backyard. The brother immediately said, you need to call the police. Mr. Rodriguez, Christopher, said that he couldn't talk. He didn't want Larissa to hear him. He could not go against Larissa. So as a result of that, he didn't talk. And then the brother, once he was able to uh, get a landline, he then called and reported it, thinking that his brother would call the police himself because he was going to Medina um, jail. But apparently he never did that, so the brother couldn't live with himself anymore. He's the one that called the police department. And there was no explanation that was provided as to what happened to the child, though the brother did require. Anything from the defense? Your Honor, at this time we only ask that the court uh, consider uh, his relative lack of significant criminal history, certainly no violent offenses of any kind. I have here that he's an offender in both Texas and Florida with felony battery, robbery, misdemeanor battery, and in Texas and Florida, and drugs. Why would you tell me that's a non violent We don't believe those are convictions for those offenses, Your Honor. You don't believe they're convictions? No, we don't. Does the state agree those are not convictions? Not of those charges. We believe lesser offenses. Well, what I have before me is felony battery, misdemeanor battery, robbery, and then Texas uh, drug test, possession test. We have the same thing you have your honor for misdemeanor. Judge? Yes. You do have the same records that you have indicating that there were arrests for robberies, felony in the second degree, and battery of felony in the third degree. As well as a conviction for a similar battery in 2016. We don't have the disposition of those arrests or felonies. He is also a felon in Bank County for, child, for a criminal non support. Okay, anything else from the defense? No, Your Honor. Mr. Rodriguez, do you want to speak? You don't have to if you don't wish. Respectfully, no, Your Honor. I didn't hear you. <clears throat> Respectfully, no, Your Honor. <clears throat> there is a plea of guilty in Florida in 2016 to battery with counsel present. December 6th. 
2016. Break out some misdemeanors, yes, Your Honor. First, I want to say that uh, the serviceman who made this phone call, it's so important that he did that, and I don't want him to go unrecognized because I can't imagine the trauma that he had hearing this in a foreign country that his brother had done something like this, asking his brother to take accountability. And then, because his brother doesn't want to be a man, he has to do it, but he did it, and I give him credit for doing that. The other thing that this case, I think, really drives home is that there is insufficient consideration given to the people that work in the criminal justice system. So I want to say to the police, to the detectives, Reynolds and Diaz, I certainly know that your job is very difficult. And I look at these photographs, And it's very hard. And I think you should be recognized more for the difficulty of what you do. And the same to the state. And to the defense, this is equally difficult for you. What we do every day is so hard. People don't give any of us the credit that we deserve. For dealing with the horrors that are brought before us. And Mr. Rodriguez, this is a horror. I know as a judge I'm not supposed to show emotion. And in 22 years I never have. This is one of the worst things I've ever seen in my life. And I don't understand, Mr. Rodriguez, why you don't want to cleanse yourself and tell the truth about what happened here. And I hope someday you do. Whatever this child's life was supposed to be, you make sure it didn't happen. You and Larissa. I look at friends and family and people who are desperate to have children and want to have families, and you too, have babies with no consideration. You just keep having them, having them, disregarding the value of their life, disregarding their purpose in life, like they're less than an object, no regard. I didn't even hear you say you were sorry. I will not accept the recommendation. Miss Rodriguez. These crimes are horrific. There's no question in my mind this child was abused. It's clear that you did everything you could, you and Larissa, to hide evidence to protect yourselves. You had every opportunity at so many points to make a difference, to get help, to stop beating somebody, to call the police, to ask for help, to try to take him to the hospital. I have to imagine that at some point you got in the internet and said, how do I bury a body? Because this is unbelievable to me. The level of meticulousness that you went through to not be discovered. I honestly don't know how you did it. I, I don't know how either one of you did it yourself. The census follows count one, involuntary manslaughter, 11 years in prison. Count two, felony of second degree, felonious assault, eight years in prison. Count three, felony of second degree, eight years in prison. Count five, abuse of the courts, one year in prison, all counts to serve consecutive to each other with credit for any time served. That's a total sentence of 28 years. That's the maximum sentence available. You're subject to mandatory post police control on counts one and two and discretionary on counts three and five. If you violate the conditions of post police control, the parole board must impose an additional prison term for up to one half of the term that I've imposed. Fines, fees, and costs are waived as your indigent period. Any questions for the state? Any questions, Adam? Uh, just just the consecutive. Oh, yes. Thank you.
The court uh, finds that consecutive sentences are necessary to protect the public from future crime and punish the offender and are not disproportionate to the seriousness of the conduct and the danger that the offender poses to the public. The court further finds that these two of the multiple offenses were committed as part of one or more courses of conduct and the harm caused by two or more of the offenses so committed was so great or unusual that no single prison term would adequately reflect the seriousness of the conduct. Any questions from the state? You have a I. I did in New York State, but I'll do it again. Yeah. I'll do it again. Thank you. Five years mandatory on counts one and two, discretionary on three years on three and five, and if you violate the conditions of post police control, the parole board must impose an official term for up to one half of the term I have imposed. Any questions? Thank you, Your Honor. No questions, Judge. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.